Palestinians in the Janine refugee camp are facing widespread destruction after Israel withdrew troops today, following what some are calling the largest military operation in the occupied West Bank in 20 years. The Janine refugee camp is home to around 11,000 people. Israel attacked what it said were militants in the camp with drone-fired missiles and ground troops. Palestinian health officials say the massive two-day military assault killed 12 Palestinians, injured at least 140 more. The head of Janine Hospital reports most of the wounded were shot in the head and chest. The Israeli military claimed it was targeting militants, but residents of the camp say they were targeted by airstrikes and nonstop ground fire. Israeli bulldozers destroyed roads out of the camp and left just a single road for ambulances to evacuate the wounded. Doctors Without Borders said Israeli troops fired tear gas several times into a hospital. Today, thousands are taking part in a funeral procession for the victims. Janine's mayor lamented the U.N. has, quote, failed us and accused Israel of war crimes. This is 63-year-old refugee in Janine, Jihad Hassan. This reminds you of the 1948 Nakba. People left their houses because of fear. Today, also people left because of fear, but also because of the bombs which target civilians and others. The Israeli army doesn't differentiate between armed and unarmed. The difference in 2002 and today is the military machines. Today, the military artillery is stronger and heavier. Now they use drones, before they used Apache weapons. I was injured in 2002 by shrap metal from a rocket in my leg. But this time, the military artillery is stronger and heavier. Meanwhile, Israel launched airstrikes on Gaza earlier today in response to rocket fire from the besieged enclave. Days before raiding Janine, the far-right Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his ultra-nationalist government announced Israel would buy 25 F-35 stealth fighter jets from the United States at the cost of $3 billion. In response to the raid, the White House defended what it called Israel's, quote, right to defend itself. Palestinian-American Congress member Rashida Tlaib condemned the operation and said, quote, Congress must stop funding this violent Israeli apartheid regime, Tlaib said. All this comes amidst more than 450 attacks on Palestinians by settlers this year alone, and as thousands of Israelis protested Monday against Netanyahu's plans to overhaul and severely curtail the powers of the judiciary. For more, we're joined by two guests. In Haifa, Amjad Araki is a senior editor at 972 Magazine, where his latest piece is headlined in Janine, Israel's unveiling the next phase of apartheid. And in Janine, Mustafa Shittah is with us, the general manager of the Freedom Theater. He wrote a piece for Mondo Weiss titled The Gravity of the Situation Cannot Be Understated, an eyewitness account from the Israeli assault on Janine. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Mustafa, let's begin with you inside the refugee camp. Can you describe what took place over these last two days? <sighs> In fact, thank you for hosting uh, me in this uh, meeting. In fact, during the last two days, we faced really a horrible and uh, difficult situation by this Israel uh, big military attack of Jenin, which is started by rocks that targeted the, the middle of Jenin refugee camp. We talk about one kilometer. They target the people, uh, the refugees in the ref in Jenin refugee camp. They are around 15,000 persons. They are live there. And they target them, and until uh, under this title, they came here to clean the yard, and they want to end the concept and the idea of resistance in Palestine in Gen through Jenin refugee camp. It was a really difficult situation for the people where they are live in a, in a hard condition without electricity from the first time of this invasion, without water, they destroy the infrastructure of the Jenin refugee camp and in Jenin city, and they try to enter and to make a siege around the camp to make it alone and uh, to put all the people under this attack uh, 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 by, from the first time. We consider that it's like a collective punishment against any person in Jenin, against everything, against the theater, against the, free, the trees, against the walls. They, they, they destroy the cars, they destroy the houses. It's like, as what I said, it's like collective punishment against the people already. They are stand and they support the resistance and they support the fighters in Jenin refugee camp. So it was really hard, really difficult the, for the children, for the women, for the old people, and including the normal people in Jenin in general. In general. 
And Mustafa Sheta, why, ha why has Janine emerged uh, in recent years as such a focus of Israeli repression and attacks? Uh, uh, what is particular about the uh, Janine uh, camp that Israel is so concerned about? We are live, in fact, in political area. I mean, all the, all the people here, they are refugees. They have a political identity. They have issue until this moment, after 75 years, until this moment, it's not solved. They ask for right of return. They are live in an area, it's not for them. I mean, for the refugees. The idea, it started from, not just from 2002, it started from long time, from the first day of establishing the, the camp in, in 54. After that, the, the different resistance from the first intifada in 87, whereas the, the refugees that are involved for liberate Palestine. And in 2002, in the big invasion happened in Jenin, where Israel think when, by, by their using the hard power, when they attacked Jenin in big invasion happened in 2002 and killed the people, talk about 53 persons already were killed in Jenin. They destroyed the core of Jenin refugee camp. They think they, by that way, they end the, the, the idea or the way of thinking about resistance and revolution. But they don't know the new generation already, they are born in 2002. They are now lead this resistance in Geneva refugee camp. And by this way, it's not to stop her. I mean, all the time, why Jenin? Because we are still in the same feeling about injustice. And the people here, they think all the time they must be involved in this kind of resistance because they protect their dignity and their common identity about the concept of refugee, the concept of right of return, and liberate Palestine and in the incubation. You're the, the general manager of the Freedom Theater. Uh, could, uh, could you talk about uh, the significance of the work that you do and uh, whether uh, your theater was targeted as well? In fact, the Freedom Theater, we are lucky because we have like a unique story. The, uh, the idea of the Freedom Theater started with the Jewish woman, her name Arna Merchamis, when she came to Jenin during the first intifada and established the childhood center in Jenin City and Jenin refugee camp. And that's why that to provide the space for the children to expression and talk about themselves. Later, Giuliano, her son, when he joined to, to her mother and they established together the Stone Theater in the middle of Jenin refugee camp, it was the first theater in Jenin. The idea of establish already theater here, it's about find the space just to talk about the story from Jenin and Jenin refugee camp and how we can put the, the, the people already, they have like real story and important story about the Palestine case, about the Palestine question in the light. So the, after that, in 2002, during the invasion, the Stone Theater destroyed by Israel. And Giuliano himself, he made the, his film, an important film, it's called Arna Children. It's a talk about what's the, the core of this dispute and conflict and the occupation in Palestine. Later in 2006, when we have the, the Freedom Theater by Giuliano and Zakiri Zubaydi, when we have the theater again, we consider it's part of resistance. It, we raise the idea and the concept of cultural resistance here, where we provide the space for a uh, create and raise the critical and brave voice here. That's important for our people, and this one of our impact work with our people, where we provide the space for the children they don't already, they have any yard or any space in, in this one kilometer to play, to game. We, we provide the space for the talent from the camp to come here to be like, not just to be a professional actor, to be like social leader, believe in, in freedom. And here we talk about the whole concept of freedom. Freedom in the incubation, freedom of thinking, freedom of choosing. All of that, we protect that and put it in our, in our uh, interest, in our focus, and our goals too. So we have this impact and they have this kind of relationship. The people in Jenin refugee camp, they consider the Freedom Theater is really important for them because already we have like this bridge between what the reality happened here and the international and the people outside of Palestine. Because we are talking about Palestine through this creative language, through theater and the performing arts. I want to also bring in Amjad Iraqi, senior editor at 972 magazine. He's speaking to us from Haifa. Um, <clears throat> Amjad, you have said the Janine operation, the Janine assault, is being carried out in the context of Israel's, quote, mowing the lawn doctrine as a means of maintaining its apartheid regime. Can you explain? 
and talk about who exactly is behind it and the significance of the day before the attack, the U.S. approving um, more weapons sales to Israel, bringing their total um, of planes to uh, what I think it was 75 attack planes. Thank you, Amy, and to Democracy Now for having me. So. In a nutshell, uh, the idea of mowing the lawn is a doctrine that has been promoted by the Israeli military for quite a while and is mostly associated with Israeli army policy vis-a-vis -vis the Gaza Strip, uh, particularly targeting uh, the political group Hamas and Islamic Jihad and other militants. And the idea of mowing the lawn or mowing the grass is essentially this idea that the Israelis have that if there is no permanent solution to really eradicate these Palestinian militant groups, then the idea is that you're in a constant cycle to basically undercut their capacity temporarily until the next round. And this is what we've been seeing put in full force, especially uh, since the beginning of the blockade of Gaza in 2007. Now, you've seen variations of this military policy practice in many respects, but what we've been seeing in the past few days in Janine is that that doctrine being played out in full force. I mean, this operation itself is not happening in a vacuum. For the past year and a half, the Israeli army has been focusing on cities like Janine and Nablus in the Northern West Bank, where it has been actively targeting Palestinian militants and their weapons. But of course, as Mustafa was describing, this has come at the complete collective punishment of the populations over there, especially the refugee camps, very much in the same kind of methodology as what we're seeing in the Gaza Strip. And as those confrontations have escalated between militants, uh, both in, against the army and against settlements, and sometimes against cities inside Israel, that the army was coming under more and more pressure to actually go in as a ground invasion. And even two weeks ago, we saw, as you described, the first time that they returned to air power through Apache helicopters, which I believe are supplied by the United States, and then two days later through a drone strike. And basically, these being the first airstrikes in the West Bank, for the first time since the Second Intifada, even though they have they've of course been very much the modus operandi in the Gaza Strip. So this is that manifestation that we're seeing. This is the philosophy that's playing out, basically as the maintenance of an apartheid regime that includes Gaza and the, and the West Bank, and that this is the solution that the Israeli authorities are seeing, from the political echelon to the military establishment. And I'm Tony Rocky, could you place what's been happening there over the last uh, few weeks and months in the context of the most extreme right-wing government that Israel has had and uh, in its history and the, the, the decision of the new Netanyahu government to begin to uh, accelerate uh, more and more settlements in the West Bank? I think oh, we're yeah, gonna. I think we may have lost the the audio. Uh, 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 let's go back to Mustafa Sheta. Uh, Mustafa, your response to that same question: the decision by the Netanyahu uh, government to begin once again the uh, uh, to accelerate a settler expansion on the West Bank. To what degree has this contributed to the uh, rising tensions there? I think Netanyahu he and his government, in fact, they are really failed. They are really failed in what's going, what's happened in Jenin, and uh, I think they want to send the important messages to their people. I think it's for the, like we can say it's like political benefit there. They try to say we are still strong, we are still can control after the, the military operations happened in Jenin and in West Bank. Before that, in, before 10 days, we, we are in the same condition for two years, in fact. And they are, we, we, nothing has changed. I mean, they are still continuing to punish us, to attack us. And I think this kind of policies, it's not just help, uh, not the Israeli people or not the, the government, and for sure not the Palestinian. They are still in the same condition, and without, uh, we can say, not with, uh, without any benefit for, the, uh, for any person, any party. Uh, so uh, I expect this government will fail and will uh, maybe it will not continue. In the first day of this government established, I said I don't expect there is something good will come with it. It will be worse and worse, especially for the Palestinian. I don't I don't know if you heard about Netanyahu statement and speech when he said he don't believe in two states now. We are two. We don't believe in two states in this condition. We are believing one state. That state it will be Palestine in, in the future because all this condition it's like Israel itself it itself now in this time.
Uh, Mustafa Shita, as we wrap up, uh, if you can respond to the possibility the Israeli government is saying that they will reserve the right to go back into Janine to continue this assault, and also the significance of the thousands of people, Israelis, who were in the streets protesting, um, but they were protesting against Netanyahu dismantling the Israeli judiciary. Were there Israeli protests against the assault on the Janine refugee camp, where you are, Mustafa? In fact, I, I, I expect Israel they will return to Jenin maybe after two days, two weeks, or one month. I, we don't know. We know they don't achieve their goals until this moment. The protection, the, the protest, and the, the, uh, the protest in Israel, the demonstration in Israel against Netanyahu, it's not to start from now. It's not just about what's going on in Jenin. They have a lot of interior problem, like with the Israeli law too. But I don't expect. There is something will get changed in Israel and uh, with the uh, Israel uh, policies. The people already elect they elect Netanyahu and the right wings. They are still a control for the uh, political scenes in Israel uh, with Ben Gavir and all this part, all this uh, wings, uh, right wings parties. So I don't expect there is something big changes in the with the with Netanyahu policies, especially he gets support from the U.S. U.S. government, uh, they said they are support uh, Israel to protect themselves. U.K. government, they said the same. They said they, uh, we are support and we understand, we accept how Israel protect themselves. But in the same time, no one talk about what's happened or what's going on with the poor people, with the normal people in Jenin refugee camp or for the people in Palestine already, they fight for to get their rights and get their liberation. We want to thank you for being with us, Mustafa Shitta, general manager of the Janine Freedom Theater, and speaking to us from the refugee camp. And I'm Judd Iraqi, senior editor at 972 Magazine, speaking to us from Haifa.